So this is the chapter resource page on the website. Um, and so at the bottom is this guide, this administrator's guide. Um, so when you, two, two people from each chapter will be an administrator for the group um, in the IM in the database. And so this is just this basic guide. It kind of goes through some of the functionality of what you can do with your chapter group. Um, we enabled uh, an emailing tool, a basic emailing tool that uh, if any of you haven't yet used a MailChimp uh, account or have not yet used a mail database, you're very new. This is a, a decent way to get started quickly to communicate with all the members of your chapter. Um, it is pretty basic and I'll show you what you can do with it, but um, it is an easy way to communicate with all your members at once. Um, Anyway, so we're going to go through some of these options, how to create your homepage, update your homepage in OIM, how everything looks, um, add photos, add events, and um, yeah. So let me, let me go back and just make sure everyone knows how to get to this page. This, is, this resource page is like the most important thing. Um, so Fulbright.org, go to the home. Homepage. You go to chapters right here, and you go to chapter resources, general resources. So this is kind of your your area of if you have questions, this is where we answer them in general. So whenever a chapter has questions, this is where we're updating the information. So this is your page. So if the if the answer isn't here, you should email us and we can update the content for it. So. Anyway, general resources, this is every, a lot of things are very important here. So if you haven't checked this page out, this is probably your best. Uh, we even have the branding guide, the most recent font for the logo. We have the website guide, which we're going to go through your website, um, even best practices. Anyway, if you haven't been to this yet, this is a great time to go to that page. Okay, so um, anyway. Then we're going to go through this whole thing, member management, member communication, um, and how to actually create things in the back end. So let's go to where we are. So let's say you are on, this is the back end of YM. This is me. This is my test. Munir Saig Bob. I don't know. Bob is my nickname. And so I've created a test group, a chapter test group. Um, so if you log into your YM, your membership, once you're an administrator, you will have access to um, the, uh, you'll be able to see chapters. And under chapters, you'll have this little figure here, this little person next to it. And if you hover it, it says group administrator. That means that you have essentially the power to look at the group, look at all the members of the group, message the group, and change uh, the group on the back end. Um, so you'll see this little toggle, these little actions. Um, you can message all members. So th what that is, is that that will be like an internal message in the membership portal. So if you just want to me message one member, that would be a good way. Um, this email all members, this will only show up if you're an administrator. So only those two people per chapter will be able to have this access. And we have set it so that if you have um, when you send an email, and I'll show you how, because this is a test group, it's just Lisa and I in the chapter, so we can actually email. Um, this email does not get vetted by us. So once you send it, that's it. We are trusting that you will send appropriate content when you email all the members. But all the members of your chapter can get an email through this. Um, okay, so if we click on the, the group, um, this is kind of the home page. Now, clearly, I haven't done very much with this. I made a link. This may be the link to your WordPress, your chapter website. So it might say arizona.fulbrightchapters.org, um, or it could be a link to your Facebook page. It could be a lot of things. But um, what you want to do on this page is be able to add, add content, um, sometimes photos, because this is like the home page for um when people log into their membership portal and they go to chapters they've been assigned to a chapter and this is what they'll see okay 
Um, there's also on the back end a group directory. So it'll search. Now there's currently only two people, but you'll see that these are the people in this chapter. So if you're a larger chapter, it might be a thousand people. It could be 2000 people. Um, but you can see pretty much all of your members here. Now we do send out the quarterly logs. So for um, usually every quarter or every uh, semi-annually, we send out a updated member, non-member and prospect list for you. Um, but you can always access it here. So if you're impatient and you wanna know exactly who's coming, who's being becoming a member of your um, chapter, you can see it right here. And also administrators um, will receive an email every time a new member pops up. So as whenever a new member becomes that chapter, as an administrator, you should be getting an email saying, hey, someone just joined your chapter uh, as a member. So, um, and Elaine, thank you for your question. Uh, but yes, we will still, we'll still be emailing out those lists. But for those who want to really keep up with the, uh, the latest of who's coming into their membership, this is a great way to do it is through the directory uh, in your chapter. Okay. So we'll go back to the group home. Um, administrators, you have um, a lot of options. So um, when you go to group admin options, this little person here, if you click on that, you're going to see a lot of options that no one else has. So you can do your make your homepage of your group a little fancier, uh, add a photo, add some text, kind of talk about maybe what areas of the state you're most active in. Um, if you're located around a university, you know, where, where, where do you have events? Um, you can also have calendar, uh, create calendar events here. Um, there are many places to have events and ideally, uh, if you're really on top of it, you have, you would add events in, uh, your membership here, YM the database, you would add events to your chapter and you would of course email the national, uh, Lisa with your event so that we can put it on the national calendar. So this calendar is just your group calendar so people can see, oh, upcoming events. Um, okay. So um, we're going to go to, um, I really wanna show the uh, messaging capability. So we're gonna just click on this email all group members. Um, now, if you already have a MailChimp or other way you, you communicate with your members, you don't have to use this. This is just something that we enabled so that you'd have the capability if you're a brand new chapter person and you want to get out correspondence quickly and you don't want to upload a list or figure out your MailChimp thing, you can do it this way. Um, so let's just, uh, we're just going to do it for fun. Um, event coming soon. And then in the body of the email, you can add um, links. So, so you could do HTTPS. So these are, um, this is a, a plain text um, email. So um, it won't have any pictures or anything, but if it's just for a message to send to your people, let's say a great example of this is maybe you're changing the location of uh, something, or even now for coronavirus, you have like, you know, you need to swap something out. This isn't a bad idea, like uh, changing the location of the, uh, sorry. Okay. Um, great question. So this, all members, when you send this, is all current members of the group. So that wouldn't necessarily mean um, grantee, like grantees who are not in the system, like like foreign um, international students who are currently there, unless you've uh, unless we've added them into your uh, chapter. But usually when we send you those um, uh, visiting Fulbrighter lists, they probably won't be members of the association like right away. And as far as prospective members, I have to check if it includes like um, expired members, if they get this message, um, check into that and I'll let you know. Okay. So let's just for fun, let's, let's go ahead and send this. Uh, you can do preview email. It 
really doesn't do much, but there it is. Just make sure it's good. And again, we're not reviewing this. So once you send it, it's going to your chapter. Um, so we're gonna send email. And you'll notice here actually at the top, this email, we've made it from your chapter email. So when you log in as an administrator, it will come from New Hampshire at Fulbright.org or Georgia at Fulbright.org. So whenever you receive a response, it will go directly to your chapter inbox. Um, additionally, it will also have your personal email in there. I'll show you what happens when you send it. So I'm gonna send this email. Cool, it's been sent successfully. That's awesome. Um, and we're just gonna go to my personal email and we'll just refresh it here. Refresh. And of course, in theory, it should give me an email. Loading Gmail, here we go. Haven't gotten it yet, but hopefully it'll come up soon. And um, so yeah, so here it comes, I hope. Anyway, it should come. I did it last night and it looks just like this. So this email is being sent by the Fulbright Association on behalf of this person. See, and then the text of your email. Oh, did it? Okay. Oh, here it is. Okay, event coming soon, right there. So um, this is what it would look like. It's very basic. So it's not like a fancy MailChimp email, but um, for anyone who wants to do this kind of quick and just needs an email to be sent out, um, this is a, a way to do it. Um, anyway, just an idea. And you'll notice, and it will go from your email, chapter email um, to all of the current members. And I will check on if it's prospective or lapsed members if they also get the email. Okay. All right. So let's go back. Let's go back to our chapter. Um, so the, um, so if you click on like the calendar for the chapter, obviously there's no events right now because I haven't added any, um, but we can add some. So let's just go ahead and do that just for, just to do it. Hold on. So add a new event to the calendar. So awesome event, really cool. The best event ever, best ever. great. Um, set your time, start date. Let's just make it, uh, okay. Um, you can even have recurring events, event location, your contact email. Um, you can even have people RSVP online. So members can log in and RSVP, which is pretty cool. Um, you can have an image, some more descriptions. You can actually insert HTML if you're feeling very advanced and spunky. Um, so yeah, there it is. So um, save this event. Let's do it. There it is. There's our event. It's awesome. That's what it says. Awesome event. And you can send event notifications. Um, you can check the um, registration. So if people register, they're here. You can edit the event. Um, so this isn't a, it's not a bad way of doing events in, in within the database, which um, now obviously you would need to advertise this event um, other places. So people aren't just going to log into your membership and be like, oh yeah, I heard there's an event and I'm gonna check it out. Um, so you, you, you will want to make sure to share this event with the, with the crew, okay? So, um, 
So yeah. Any questions so far? We're just gonna keep going. Okay. Um, other options we have, um, you can upload photos for everyone to see. Um, so people can be jealous of your awesome events. Um, so you can basically create uh, photo albums. I know some of you have probably already done this, uploading photos, um, putting in photos into your uh, chapter, into your space here. Um, again, this is separate from your website. So w WordPress website, which Lisa will go over next. Um, but this is another place to kind of archive um, what you've done in the back end for other for members. Um, the the biggest thing for this is that once somebody becomes a brand new member, if they've never been a member before, they're going to log into their membership portal here, and they've been assigned a, ch a chapter. And so when they go to the chapters and they go to their home page and they go to their to check out the chapter. It's really ideal if you have stuff in there. It looks like, oh yeah, this chapter is active. In addition to your website, um, because this is just one other way to communicate with people, um, to let them know you're doing things, and to, um, I mean, even start conversations. Now, um, anyway, I, I would say that this probably your membership backend is probably the most underutilized part of um our organization as a whole i think there's a lot of capabilities that we haven't yet uh people have not yet used to its fullest and um so yeah so that's kind of it's kind of the basics of that the the back end so the next um the next steps for you would be to create uh decide on two administrators who will get emails for new members who will have the ability to email out quick messages to your uh chapter and to kind of um, update this space, okay? Are there any questions about your membership? Um, how can I RC form form include payment option? Uh, okay, so you, you're, you're saying you wanna have a, a payment option for the event. Um, I'm, I'm not yet sure how to do that on the, um, on the events here, but I can, I can look into it and I will get back to you for that. Um, I, I, there might be a way, but I'm not sure. If you already have an event software that you use, some people use Eventbrite, some people use all sorts of stuff. Um, certainly that's a great way to do it. You could just include the link in this event here. Um, but I, I, can, I can look into, um, I would say definitely if you already have an event software that you use and people are already used to, like Eventbrite or RSVPify or whatever it is, um, I would go with that if they're already used to it. Um, but I would just include the link to that event in your, uh, in your events here on your WordPress, uh, your, your chapter website, and obviously sending them to Lisa to put on the national calendar. Okay. The main thing is to, we're trying to get this information out to as many people as possible, no matter where they're checking. They're checking on Facebook. They're checking on your chapter website. They're checking on your on the, the national calendar, um, all those places. Okay. Great. All right, Lisa. All you. Okay. So thank you, Munir. So um, we are going to now go through um, WordPress. So every chapter has a WordPress site that the State Department has set up for us. Um, I just want to go quickly. I'm going to show you an example of one. So the Georgia chapter, I'm not sure if we have anyone from Georgia um, here, but they have a great example of a website. So everyone's website is going to look sort of the same. This is going to be kind of the bar at the top. It's going to say your chapter name. You have an about us page or a home page at least. The Georgia chapter has put like a little subscription uh, description of their um, chapter. And then they have this really cool thing where you can click and subscribe um, to updates. So that's something really nice that they put. And I actually loved it that when I first went to their website, it was just a pop-up. So I don't know if it will come up again, but when I went there the first time, the first thing that came up was like this box and it said subscribe and you could fill your name in and your email address. So you can always get updates from the Georgia chapter. 
Um, we have their leadership here at the bottom, so we can see who their uh, board members are, who's their president. They have a calendar. Um, so this part is empty, but they're at least using some of it. Um, and yeah, so this is this is just an, a quick example of a nice um, chapter, and we're going to go through how to set your website up from the back end. Um, so when you're logging in, I I can send everyone um, the password. We're not going to be posting passwords online um, or on this webinar because we'll be posting it publicly online. But everyone does have a login and a password to their website, and I can send those to you in an email. And once you do log in, this is what your back end looks like. So this is the back end of WordPress. We have all of our options that we're going to get um, get to use here on the side. The first one that I want to point out is posts. So I'm already here. You click posts, and these are going to be basically like a blog blog post. Every time you do a new post, it's going to be like a, creating almost like a new little page on your website and it'll show up and it will be under posts. You can, you can read an example here is Nan rides for Fulbright. So this was an update about Nan and her, her bike ride across the U S um, chapter spotlight. So these, you will probably already have these in your website because they're general, they already exist, but you can add more. So I'm going to show you how to do that. When you add a new post, you're just going to go up top here. You're going to click add new. So this is just creating a new post so that you can say like, let's say um, you're the Chicago chapter and you just had this really awesome winter wonderland event and you want to tell people about it. You would type in winter wonderland event. And you're going to talk about it. That's going to be the title of your post. You're then going to use this Divi builder to start to create your content. So this is where you're going to build in that content. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click insert columns. This is basically just if you want your your page to have like different columns like newsletter format or if you want it to be full page format. I recommend most of the time we're going to just want a full page. And then it, once that's in there, you'll have modules. So a module is just any type of content that you're going to put into your post. So this is like a photo, text, um, a button, anything of that effect. So when you click insert modules, you'll see these options of what you can include. So we have image, um, you know, we have text here. So we're going to do this one just to show you. So you can um, set up the color of your text and the orientation, left, center, how do you want it to look. And then you scroll down and this is where you can start typing. We have an amazing event with 70 participants. And then you can talk. You can have someone write this post for you. You can copy and paste it. Once you're finished adding your text, you can save it and it will be there. Um, you can also add, let's add a photo. So we'll go back to our module to insert and we'll do an image. Let's see if we can upload an image from our library. Let's upload a picture here. So we can upload it. And once we're finished, we can save and exit. Once you've added in all your content, you can continue to just add things. You can, um, on the right side here, you can see what it looks like by hitting preview. So once you click preview, it will come out and this is what the post will look like on my page. You see the title, it says winter wonderland event. You'll have your text. I have my photo here and people can now read and access this. Um, and read about the amazing things you guys are doing. So that's um, sh hopefully isn't too hard. Um, you do just need to remember to use this little Divi builder and then continue to build in content, text, images, buttons, 
Um, if you want to keep it basic, you can just do text and images, and that's fine. As you get more comfortable with it, you can maybe start to play around with some of the modules that you have. Elaine was just asking about events, but we can. Yeah. Elaine, we'll, we'll get back to that question uh, near the end. Yeah. This is a good question. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's go ahead, post. Go ahead and just publish it just for fun because then they can see it on the page. This is, uh, so this is Arizona's. All right, sorry, Arizona, we're going to publish quick. <laughs> sorry, Holly. <laughs> I think Holly was here. I think she left. Um, and then let's go. So go to Arizona's page. So now when you're on Arizona's homepage, you'll see the next thing that's posted is Winter Wonderland event, which is the blog post that we just created. And when you click it, there it is. So that's just right on the homepage. So this is something really nice that you guys can start doing after you have events, a great way to continue to publicize and spread the word about what happened and who was there. Are there any questions on making a post? Okay. Um, if there's no questions on post, we'll go through to not my image. <laughs> yeah, not quite an image of an Arizona winter, but okay. So the next thing we'll do is, um, events. So you guys all, like we showed you the Georgia calendar that was empty. You can start adding your events to your own calendar. We have at the Fulbright national office our website we try to post everyone's events so that it's all in one place but chapters individually on your website have your own chapter calendar event calendar so that is going to be in wordpress when you go to events on the left hand side here and if you click add event it's pretty simple you're just going to title your event so we can call it fulbright forum Um, you can put the event description down here. So you can say like the time, the date. Uh, well, this is going to be where when people see your event on the calendar, if they click it, this information will come up. So if you have like any questions, RSVP to Holly, and you could put Holly's email or whoever you want the RSVP person to be. This is just going to be information you can put a description you can put bios of any speakers who are coming all of that information will go here then on the right hand side you're going to put when the event is so we'll let's say there's an event happening on march 26th um you can set the time so let's say this event is happening at three o'clock p.m so once you have all that information in you can put more information here, so like a location, address, um, but you don't have to. And I'll show you what happens when you click publish. So once you've filled in your information, you're going to click publish. And I always have to do it twice because I never fill in the location below. So this is giving us an error. But if you hit it publish a second time, it lets it go through. So now when we go back to our Arizona calendar, we should see it. And there it is on the 26th, we just loaded an event and you see when I hover over it, I have that information that I was writing in the text box. And also if you scroll down, it's here, you can click it. And when you click it, the details show up on the page. So you can, if you have all of your events at one time, you can just continue to add them all in at once. So you can click add event again, and just continue to add all of your events for the semester or for the year, or for however far ahead you have them planned. You can just plug them all in and then they'll all show up on your calendar. Um, you can include links and like, if there was a link here, you could click it. If there was an event, right, you could click it. Um, this is a really nice way to show all of the things that your chapters are doing. So you guys do a lot, so you should publicize. Let's see, are there questions? 
how soon will we be posting this webinar? We will be posting the webinar um, next week. So anyone who's not um, able to join us right now will have access to this webinar next week. We'll put it on our YouTube channel and we will also send it out in an email to everyone. So the next thing I'm gonna show you on your WordPress is the comments feature. So when you do post a, a blog post or anything you have on your website, people are gonna be able to make comments. You have to approve those comments in order for them to show up. So again, on your left-hand dashboard here, there's a, a box that says comments. You'll see this little three shows that we have some notifications. So the notifications um, tell you there's comments. They're gonna be highlighted in yellow. And approving them is easy. You're just gonna check them off. And your action is going to be, you can click approve. And I'm not going to approve it because some of these comments I think are irrelevant right now. But the, once you've done that, you're just gonna click apply and those comments will show up. This is a really great way to just show that people are engaging with your posts. Um, you can see here, you can also like reply to the comment if you want and start typing back to them um, and post that as well. So that's just a way that you can continue to engage virtually with people who are going to your website. So the last thing that I'll show you, we have kind of four big things here. The last thing is going to be pages. So again, on our dashboard, we have pages on the left hand side. If I just click here, it's going to come up everything. These are all the pages. So I'll show you again on Georgia's. So just so we understand these things at the top, these are pages. So when you're managing pages, this is what you're editing. You're editing if you have a home, the contact page, join the Fulbright page, Posts are going to be the blog posts that we created together earlier. So under pages, we're pretty much all chapters, um, I think at this point, are gonna wanna make sure your contact information is right. So I'm gonna go to this About Us page on the Arizona website. And you'll see here that we have the mission of the Fulbright Association, uh, description of the Arizona chapter. And then here we have a list of the board members. So Arizona recently had an election. So these more board members are different. So what the Arizona chapter is going to want to do is click here. And we're going to edit. I'll let them edit it yourselves. But um, this is where you're going to edit the content. So you'll put in the new president's name. And then once you've put the, the name and the title of, of all of your board members, you'll click save and exit and it should show up here. So every chapter is going to, going to want to make sure that you have your correct board member list posted on your website. Um, this is how people are going to contact you. This is so people know who to get in contact with. So it's very important that at least this is up to date on your website. So I'll go back to pages leave without saving anything. And anything else is up to you and what you want um, to add. So like we said, the Georgia, oh, this is Arizona, but the Georgia chapter has, you know, a page where you can fill out um, your information so you can subscribe, you can add a page like that. You can really do whatever you want with pages and then they'll just appear at the top part of your website. Are there any questions so far on WordPress? Any other questions? Okay, so those are our four main functions of WordPress. We have posts, pages, comments, and your calendar. Um, I will send out a summary of this to you guys so that you can review what we just went through. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back to Munir because he's going to talk about the Fulbrighter app. All right. Um, one other thing before we leave WordPress, I just want to make sure you know, please do not change any themes or any of the editing of the back end CSS or HTML. Some of you probably don't know what that is, but just uh, don't mess with the, the core of function of the website um, because I have to go out and change it if it gets broken. So mainly posts, pages, comments, events. Um, if you need a plugin to be installed, you can let us know. I can, we can do it. 
unless you have somebody super savvy, but um, please don't mess with the branding of the websites. They're there for a reason. Okay, now we're gonna do some fun stuff here. Um, now I know some of you are probably already on the Fulbrighter app and have seen the pretty cool things it can do. Um, we are, um, Jeffrey, yeah. Oh, a banner at the top of the page. Okay, let's. we can go back and, and try that here. Um, okay, so yeah, if you want to um, add a banner to, um, are you talking about a post or any page? Okay, so let me uh, let me go to Arizona just for the example here. Um, so this this banner here, this banner is um, can be added to every every page if you'd like, and it's usually already on every page. Um, if you'd like it to be on a specific page, uh, we can do that, um, or we can we can help you do that. Um, I will show you that in within the the module itself, um, you can add. Um, this is called a full width slider. That's basically the banner. That is how you make that banner. It's called the full width slider. It's a, it's a module that you can insert into the um, into your page if you'd like a different banner. So. Um, right here, this is called the full width slider, okay? Right, yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, so that's how you do it. You just go in here and add, add that specific module for the, um, for the banner, okay? All right, I'm gonna go on to Fulbrighter app. Um, now I know maybe some of you have also received an invitation for the Fulbrighter app and haven't signed up yet, but make sure you do because it's pretty cool. Um, you might have also been on the um, in the workshop where we kind of went over what the app can do. Um, but we are going we're starting to um, add chapter spaces for each chapter that's very active so that they can use it. Um, I think the Fulbrighter directory is one of the coolest things. So um, we're already on Arizona, so let's just do Arizona. Um, so if we zoom in to Arizona, you'll notice we can see there's 70 Fulbrighters in Phoenix. And all we have to do is click here and there they are. We can, we can go find them. This is a person, Elijah, let's see all about him. Um, so if you have the Fulbrighter app, I would definitely go around and, and poke around and see what it can do. Um, but what's really cool is that we have, we've already invited all of our current members at the Fulbright Association to the app. So it has about 15,000, um, uh, people, active users, and they're using it to post very interesting comments, things. Uh, it's essentially like Facebook, but for Fulbrighters only. Um, so the cool thing that we're going to create this is just kind of a preview, but um, each one of each each chapter would have a kind of a point person for the Fulbrighter app in order to use it to basically um, it's kind of like another version of social media, but just for Fulbrighters. And you may find people in here that you haven't already contacted, or maybe they are people who you know aren't in our database. They could be just rogue Fulbrighters roaming around. And you could see them in your your area of the the. So if you're in if you're in the directory here, go to the map, and let's say, for example, you are in let's say let's go to Michigan. So, um, and you click on this person. Well, Daniel Conrad or Diane Conrad, he's this person might not be in your in your chapter events or in your. Um, and your mailing list. So this is a great place to find other Fulbrighters and connect with them. So I'm gonna just go to the back end of the portal here and show you uh, soon what you'll be able to do. Um, we're going to create these groups for you 
as far as chapter groups, <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> Rogue Fulbrighters. <laughs> I don't know what genre, but hopefully like a uh, be like an indie rock band or something. Um, oh yeah, so Elizabeth, um, if you haven't gotten an invitation for the Fulbrighter app, I hope you have. But if you haven't, you can just go to, it's called it's just fulbrighternetwork.com and you can sign up. And when you register, they actually confirm and make sure that you are a Fulbrighter. So sometimes it does take a couple days if, if you haven't been invited already. So what we did is we invited all our members and we actually sent them all the Fulbright information, like their country and year. So they were automatically uh, enrolled. So if you haven't, um, I would definitely go there and do that. So, um, and, if you, and if you've gotten the invitation, haven't logged in, you're missing out because it's pretty cool. And since coronavirus is going on, you might as well do this because, you know, you can't leave our houses. So it's a great, great opportunity. So um, you will be getting a group similar to this where you can post, um, again, you can post events. You can post your latest news information. Um, you can see who is enlisted in your chapter. So if I click on subscribers here, um, then you will see uh, it's hopefully will bring up my subscriber peoples. I don't know, it's getting angry at me. There, there it went, and I totally ignored it. Okay, so, um, so we're in the back office, we're in the back end. So this is this is kind of what you will see when you get your, um, when you're going to be able to um, have your own group. So we have our Fulbright Association group, which would be like the national thing, and then you will have your own chapter one that you can use, and you'll be able to see who you have. Um, as users, and you will be able to also, if you want, you can send the messages through this application. Um, so here are some of our users assigned to the Fulbright Association. So right here, instead of Fulbright Association, it would say Fulbright Association, comma, Arizona chapter, or comma, Greater New York chapter. So those who are assigned to you, you'll be able to see um, in the back end of the Fulbrighter. So even even random Fulbrighters who you don't know are in your chapter may also subscribe to your chapter because it's their region or their state. So Fulbrighters in Iowa may be on the Fulbrighter app and they may say, oh yeah, I, you know, I align with whatever chapter, Iowa chapter. And so they will show up in this user group. Um, you'll also be able to post very cool events that every, all the Fulbrighters can see. So if you make it public, um, you'll be able to see that. So for example, we, you know, we're not having our advocacy day or um, conference, but you can, uh, there's a, the event is out there in the, in the ether of, um, in the, the Fulbrighter app. So let me go and I will show you what I'm talking about. If I spell it right. Then. So um, anyway, I think this app is a very cool tool and one of many other cool things that are happening in the Fulbright community. And so this event, this upcoming events tab, this is where you can have your own events, chapter events that people can see that are happening. So if I click on this one, um, something in Houston, this is some conference, some writer's conference. So, and anyone, any Fulbright can see this. So random Fulbrighters could, you know, go to Flint His Hills History Conference. If they click on this, they can see some information about it. And this is giving you a lot of exposure to Fulbrighters, you know, who you might not already know about. Um, so, hey, look at that, okay. So it looks like a, a chapter's already posted this. So the Central Ohio chapter has already posted this event um, in Columbus, Ohio, March 23rd. And there it is. And so since it's on the global feed, it's completely public, about 15,000 Fulbrighters can see this event. 
So once you have your chapter space, you can publish uh, publish events, and um, it'll be yet another tool to reach out to Fulbrighters. Okay, so that's just a preview, but we're going to get all the chapter space set up, and we will send you um, the admin logins, um, depending on who you are, if you're one of those people. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it back over to Lisa. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Just um, to recap, we went through um, your membership, showed you how to view your members, showed you that when you put your chapter name and group admin options, you have many options, including an option to email all of your members. Um, we went through the WordPress site on how to update your event calendar, make a blog post, update pages that might be out of date, like the one that lists your chapter board, and approve comments. And Munir just showed you the Fulbrighter app chapter space. The webinar that we will be having next month is going to be an in-depth dive on how to use your chapter space. So that is what's coming next on the calendar and it'll give you a lot more resources, a lot more in-depth on how to use that webinar or that, um, that resource. Um, so the next steps that we're asking for you are to send Munir and I at least one representative from your chapter to serve as the administrator um, for your YM profile. Um, and then also least, send us, I'm sorry, at least two chapter board rep representatives to serve as the admin on your YM profile, and at least one rep to manage the chapter's profile on the Fulbrighter app. So you can, okay, um, there might be an update to that. Shaz Akram is here. And she is going to have some announcements for us. So when she does give those announcements, um, maybe she can help us clarify. But we do want you to start thinking about who you would like to have um, managing your, your online spaces. Um, and right now, I'm just going to take any, any leftover questions that you have, um, anything we can help clarify. I think Elaine had one. Um, I know she might have left, but um, she had a, a good question about um, basically messaging and events and what to use and how to use it. And so I generally um, you, you want to decide on what you're going to use. So some, some chapters it will be MailChimp and Eventbrite, and that's totally fine. Um, we're not expecting you to use YM to email all your members. That's just one tool. Um, but in addition to, if you use MailChimp to email to your your uh, entire chapter and you use Eventbrite, you just need to make sure that you're send, putting that Eventbrite link on your chapter website, in your YM space for your in the member portal, and hopefully soon the Fulbrighter app and Facebook, of course. So once you do one thing, you just want to make sure that it's on all the platforms so that any way somebody finds you, they can see it. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're not sure about Eventbrite yet and not sure what to use to, to do your events, um, we can definitely talk kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, and I will look into the, the YM backend to see if it's possible for you to, um, set up registrations in there. But, um, you know, for now, you know, there's all, there, and there's always kind of the old fashioned way of people, you know, emailing you events, RCPs. I know. Now that we're kind of in, people are in quarantine, it might be a time for us to revisit how you uh, organize your events, how you organize your communication. Um, but, you know, these are all tools that you can use to make sure you cast the widest net, especially posting on your, your website all this information so that, um, ran, you know, random people are, you know, probably still searching your website. I know you probably feel like, no, there's not much traffic, but you just need to make sure that your web presence is um, is available. So I hope that kind of answers Elaine's question. Are there any other questions? If uh, there are no other questions, we are going to hear from Shah. She'll give you guys a few more announcements and updates. Hello everyone, how are you? 
I guess everyone's mute, so I can't hear everyone. Um, so the exciting news is that there is going to be no obstruction or break in you communicating with us. Um, as of Monday, we are going to be remotely working. Um, DC has declared a state of emergency um, and uh, many offices are shutting down. Uh, so I um, have my cell phone uh, is available to everybody. So anyone wants to call and talk, you're welcome to call my cell phone. Um, I will return your call, um, if not picking up immediately. Uh, so don't feel as if, you know, suddenly this office is not housed by staff, we are gone. We're constantly there. Uh, we will continue to monitor the situation. I have emailed ECA in regards to continuing uh, the uh, requesting the rollover of grant funds for fall, but we have not heard yet. Uh, we are trying to work on that. Uh, we should hear soon and we should let you know that information, but either way, you know, be prepared if you didn't use the funds, you know, and if activities are not, um, you're, you're not probably going to hold activities from now till the semester ends. Um, so it's okay if they say, no, you can't keep the funds, we can return them. You will be able to request new funds in the new year. So not to worry, um, it's not the end of the world. Uh, so don't stress about that. Hold on to the money till you hear otherwise. If you can reschedule activities and still do them when things get a little better, you can do that. Uh, just tell us that you've changed the activity you proposed in your grant application. This is the new one and do it. Uh, we will try and support you guys as much as we can. Um, it's best to email um, Lisa about anything. Uh, you can copy me on those emails if you want. Uh, you can email me anytime, but any chapter related activity you want to share or you know, make sure Lisa is also looped into those emails. Uh, a lot of the event summaries we get from you, uh, we use a lot of those to create content to highlight what our chapters are doing. There's one important announcement I want to make. State Department is uh, is wanting us to roll out the Fulbrighter app very quickly. And we plan to have all chapters on that by May. And you guys actually using that space because they will not be giving us lists of incoming Fulbrighters. They will have them already added to the app and you will have to use the app as a way of communicating with the incoming Fulbrighters. That's number one. Number two is they are also going to add all the pre-departure American Fulbrighters going on grants abroad on the app as part of their orientation. That means the thing that has eluded us for years that we don't have access to those Americans going out or those Americans when they return, they will already be in the app added to the space of the groups that you all individually as chapters maintain. So you will actually be using the app to communicate with them as well while they're abroad. Of course, everything is up uh, in the air. Um, my cell is, hi everyone, by the way, I'm, I'm seeing a message. Um, my cell is listed here on the screen. I, I, are you looking at this screen? Um, it's 202-550-0826. We could unmute everyone, but we're recording. Okay. Sorry, we, we are recording the session to be shared. Um, so the, 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 the urgency of me giving you this announcement is that ECA is very strongly pushing us to push our chapters onto the app. Um, we Since we joined the app officially, we have increased usage by 5,000 people. Um, uh, so that's a pretty good, our, our, our joining rate from our community is about 35%. Um, it's pretty good, but we they want this community that is completely only for Fulbrighters to be actually used by Fulbrighters. Uh, so that's why we're doing these series of webinars. Um, the back end is important uh, because 
the admins get automatic notification that a new member has joined their group. And then so, so you don't need to ask us to update your lists. You get that directly and you can communicate with all your members directly. And I know it's confusing with all these uh, platforms, but the only reason we want you to use MailChimp is because our platform doesn't have a way of adding subscribers without being members. So hence you need something like MailChimp so that people can actually, who are non-members can also join your mailing list. And then you sort of cultivate them and transition them to membership. Um, it's, 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 I know it's a lot of platforms, but it is very important for you all to understand why we have so many things coming at you. Uh, we are not trying to make your life more difficult. Uh, we're just trying to help and um, take away the human interaction between you getting the information you need to be able to contact people you need to contact. I hope that makes sense. I know it sounds a little complicated, but um, it is all about you having very little red tape or protocol to go through to get to who you want to get to in a very quick and timely manner. So think about who you're going to nominate for the app. Um, the app I'm also, um, I've also selected a couple of people and I will be running those names by the presidents also, but it is very important for someone to actually use it and be a user and know how to use it rather than you just starting it and not even keeping up with it because that would be worse and the admins on our back end. So those were my announcements. I'm happy to take more questions. And I know that, and by the way, this is a great time with everything being remote for you guys to really focus on the technological because we are going to get cab off the ground uh, again. We're gonna have cab calls. We're gonna have webinars. We're gonna um, do more webinars with you all so that uh, we are more helpful at this stage. We will even do a webinar on how to have an online forum for you guys. So if you want to do an online forum for your chapter members on a topic, we'll help you uh, sort of set that up and can, can be of assistance if you need our help. There are so many new ways to continue the great programming you already do. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Lisa. And I'm here to take, I, I'm, I'm seeing the question, so feel free to uh, type a question on the chat platform. So if there are no further questions, um, if you think of anything later on, uh, like you're thinking later in the day or you're reviewing any of your notes, feel free to send us an email and we can get back to you about anything specific. We can also get back to you with your logins and we will be sending out this webinar um, next week with some more details and you know a recap of everything that we went through. Um, Jeffrey, you're asking, what if we did a car cruise? I, I I don't know what a car cruise is. If you can type it out, then we can uh, we can look at it. I mean, anything to do with too many people sitting together, you know, is of course of concern. Um, and they say you should be six feet apart from from anyone, so, like a caravan in separate cars. I mean, yeah, but you know. Um, if this thing can wait till May, that would be better. You Remember, you have till June 30th to use your grant funds. So there's no hurry for you to do just do something now or next month. You can just wait off. The weather gets better and see how things go. And then, yeah, you could do something that has different cars or something. As long as it's safe for the region you're in and it's safe for the people you're engaging with. Um, of course, the 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 right now, the... Uh, notification we've gotten from State Department is to tell chapters to cancel all chapter activities because it has large gatherings. But you know, not all chapters have large gatherings. They are smaller gatherings, several gatherings. So use use good sense and take care of your health and your and the health of others. And I think that's that's the way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I Jeffrey, I would I would stay away from this for now. I would shift this to May when the weather gets a little warmer. Uh, best way to announce a postponed event. Um, I best way is to just email the the people who you you have told about the event, 
uh, the, we can share it. You can let us know if you want. We can send it to your member group. We, we'd be happy to send an, a, a message on your behalf. Um, you can put it on your website. The event has been postponed. You can put it on your Facebook site. Uh, so many ways. Yep. Um, so with that, you guys, thank you so much for attending this webinar. I hope that there was some useful information um, for you and some useful tools that you have. And now you can start to get more into your websites and into YM and start thinking about how you will engage your members on Fulbrighter. Uh, thank you to Munir for your expertise and to Shaz for your announcements. And again, any questions you guys have, feel free to send us an email. We'll be working remotely, but we are still here to support you with whatever you need. So look forward to staying in touch and hopefully you guys will have some new creative ways to engage your members virtually. So with that, have a good day, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.